y'all what welcome to another radio vlog today is sunday my name is amber and i just wanted to really quickly before i get into introducing what my books are going to be this week talk about my previous vlog so thankfully i was able to transfer my clips from my phone to my computer um which is just really nice i am very happy about that um so i can continue on with this but i feel like that vlog was a bit of a hot mess because I, I it got away from me because I had we had weather situations. I got distracted from, um, from my vlog and reading with uh, other things. Specifically, I was trying to reorganize my TBR. I was transferring it from my Goodreads. This isn't like a specific TBR, like my own TBR that I have physically in my ebooks, but like a general TBR where like these are the books that I want to try to get to, you whenever you know, like whenever. Uh, to the span of my life kind of thing um i was trying to categorize i was categorizing it by genre and then um labeling what kind of diversity the book had if it had any so that it would be easier for me to find when i'm searching i will talk a little bit more about that because i do have a tbr prompt that i'm doing but i'll talk more about it after i talk about this so i got a bit of a hot mess because i got distracted we had a weather situation and i ended up returning the books that i had gotten from the library the majority of them except for one because it was for a prompt and then i got three other books that were already on hold it says i was feeling a lot of pressure and i know that i talked about trying to read one of those books that I returned so i thought i would mention it here the fact that I was feeling a lot of pressure to try to read these books and it was also taking away from the other books I was trying to read when I got all these books. Um, so I just I just felt like I was getting lost in the weeds with that. So I just returned the majority of them for, because of that because I, I just don't want that pressure anymore because that is going to cause me to get into a reading zone. I want to enjoy the books I'm reading and I want to enjoy the process of reading which is just so very important for me because if I'm not enjoying the process of reading I will end up in a reading slump um so anyways I know that I'd so and also it got kind of messy because I had hadn't realized I had already talked about not reading We the Drowned and then I did that and then I did it over again but not talking about that and so I just kept that first clip in because there were things that I talked about that I actually wanted to be kept in there. So it was just a bit of a mess, combination of not remembering weather situation and just it being my first vlog in like almost two years, I believe. So yeah, moving on, I'm going to talk about uh, my what my goals are for this week. Um, so as I said, I do have a TBR prompt, but it's not like a monthly thing where it's like I'm trying to like get these prompts done in a month or anything. These are just things that I want to like uh, read when as I throughout the month and then I will change out the books for these prompts when I get done with the majority of them. Um, but yeah, uh, I've done, I think I'm halfway through the prompts for the most part, so um, and the books I got from the library this past week, I think all of them are being used for a prompt, I believe. So hopefully I can finish all these books. But let's just um, get started with my TBR. Uh, so how I want to work this from now on is I want to be switching each week between a reread and a first time read. And then I want to make sure that each week I'm reading a book off my script because I have a script subscription and that's something else that I've been feeling guilty about is that I'm paying for this this subscription but I haven't been utilizing it um so that's just a little disappointing but I know that I would when I got past the library books that was dominating my life but um it's just if I'm not using it I don't feel like I should have it so that's just something that um I need to make sure that I'm doing on a regular basis and then of course my library book so for my reread, I really want and need to finish The Lord of the Rings. I just need to finish The Return of the King and I'll be done with Lord of the Rings. Um, so that is something that I will for sure be trying to finish. I'm not going to mind too much since it is a reread if I don't finish it this week. Um, I can listen to it here and there when I am able to. But I just want to be make sure that I am putting focus on being done with that. But... Um, I should be able to finish it this week either way then for my script 
um, script is going to be Blackwater Sun by Zen Cho. This is for my prompt of reading a book that's not set in the US, UK, or Canada, because I feel like those are the three countries that I tend to read from, um, the Europe, the England, UK area. So I, very white, uh, very uh, centered on where I live type thing. And I want to make sure I'm expanding into other countries that I typically don't read from, especially countries that are not predominantly white. Um, so that is that. And I'll talk more about, I will talk about what that is when I actually start to read that one. But the next, the, the third and last book that I will be reading is the library book. And it's also going to be used for the prompt of polar fantasy. And this one is The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett. This one I will be reading first. Um, Return of the King, I will be reading like an hour a day, no matter what. But this is going to be my main read each day. Um, I'm going to try to read 200 pages a day. I should be able to read this in two days if I do so. Um, today, which is Sunday, is like a home chores day. So I don't think I'll be reading anything today. But um, I will talk about what this is about here. Uh, this is a um, polar fantasy inspired by the Romanovs, I believe. Uh, so, so it's kind of technically set in Russia or it's inspired by Russia. Like I, I don't think it, I don't know if it's set in Russia specifically or if it's inspired by Russia. So it's set in an alternate universe type thing, but it has Russian, a Russian setting type view and whatever. So I don't know how closely she's going to hit on the Romanov story um, in history or if it's just going to be like the theme, it's going to be like certain things that you, will relate to it in kind of like a broad sense. I don't know. So this is about Akata who uh, want, all she wants is to stay alive and the chance to prove herself as a scholar. Once Akata's brother is finally named heir. Oh, okay. Now I remember. So like what happens is that her brother ends up being the heir to the throne or to the dukedom, but then um, She like she just thinks that it'll she can leave and you know do her thing that she wants, but then um something happens where oh her parents and her twelve siblings all fall fall victim to a strange sleeping sickness and there's there's no cure and they can't seem to find one. So she ends up having to take on the the title of Duke. Um her brother's captivating warrior bride and ever encroaching challengers from without and within her ministry so she has to like take on the role of leadership um which she's never been prepared for really and yeah try to survive that kind of help so this sounds very interesting looking forward to starting this tomorrow and i will talk more about my thoughts on it at when i actually have read it so update for the day um i did read my hour of the Return of the King, um, enjoyed that, but I did end up DNFing the Winter Duke. Um, I think I did talk about what this is about, so I'm not going to go into that again, but I did read like 150 pages, which is not my typical um, limit when it comes to deciding to DNF. For a book of like 400 pages, 50 pages would have been enough, um, but I was determined to see where I was going because there was aspects to this that I really enjoyed and that I was hoping that um and I was hoping that things that I wasn't enjoying was going to like get balanced out with actual plot stuff. So I will say this, um the things that I really loved about this was the world. We have this ice kingdom on top and then there's a water kingdom on the bottom and I loved like the the fact that they are connected with one another through magic and there's all these things that were so fascinating but then it just got overshadowed by politics which just made this book boring and tedious to, to even try to read um i also loved the fact that we had a a queer romance going on and our buddy and, and i'm pretty and i looked at the end so it does turn into a full-blown romance um and i was really hoping for that but then it's like, again, this book is 
focus on politics and I don't not typically mind politics in stories as long as it doesn't like take away from the plot if it helps to move the plot forward and character development and such um then I don't mind it but when it becomes the whole book everything that's just not something that I enjoy or appreciate from my books um it was just all about the everyday like details of running a kingdom type thing um and her kind of having to like deal with that and I was just like that's not what I was here for like I was expecting us to be more into like yes that but then more about like the curse and then um this woman that she ends up um like in ending up in like a relationship that you know wasn't meant to be a real relationship and such I was expecting more from that area less about the politics or at least the balance of that but then you know and I was like, this Karen character, Ikata, wasn't really doing much of anything. She was kind of just being pulled around here and there. And it was really frustrating. And then, like, the one moment that she does something, which is, like, I'm not going to say because it would be spoilers. But, like, that gets overshadowed because, again, the politics aspects of this, the running of the kingdom aspect of this is completely taking completely took over everything else so it's like if you don't mind a book that is centered solely on the politics and less about the world and the plot and the characters this is going to be for you but if you're somebody who um respects the characters and the plot to take focus um be the forefront of the plot then i wouldn't not read this and it's so crazy to me because this book is boring and tedious to work through and the plot and just like the aspects certain aspects of this story that um you can see how like peeking through all of that would make you think that this wouldn't be as tedious and boring as it is or as it should be it shouldn't be as boring and as tedious as it, it actually is so i'm just like kind of disappointed because there were like aspects that i was really enjoying that i just did not get but anyways that is my update i will be starting um blackwater sun tomorrow um just right now i'm just Taking a break from reading. Hopefully tomorrow my my I'll reset it all things and it will be enjoying that one um better than I enjoyed this one. Hey all, so today is Tuesday and I am back for another update. Um I just got back from work and walking my dog, so I'm ready to settle down um and relax for the day. So um while I was at work, I listened to my hour of the Return of the King, which I'm really enjoying where we are in the story. We are in Gondor with, I keep mixing up who's who. I think it's Pippin. Um, yeah, Pippin, because he's the one that annoys me. <laughs> Anyways, so we're there where, where um, Farmir is about to be burned alive, possibly, and uh, also with Gondor and Merry on their way to help them. Uh, this, like I said, this is like one of my favorite parts of this book because I just absolutely uh, enjoy this. Frodo's and Sam's perspective is not my favorite out of it. It's a little bit more tedious, but I get the importance of it. Either way, I'm enjoying this. But I also started a new book today, Blackwater Sister by Sen Cho, which I read like, um, read slash listened to like two and a half hours while I'm working and I'm absolutely enjoying this. So this is about uh, Jasmine Teo who is closeted, broke, and moving back to Malaysia with her parents. Um, her father has gone through um, a cancer situation. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, he's just like recovered from cancer, I think. I, Yeah, I, don't, I think that, well, it hasn't been very clear if he's like out of the woods fully or not when it comes to cancer, but it seems like he's on the mend um and he's gotten a job back in malaysia um so all that while she's also being haunted by her ama and i absolutely enjoyed the banter and their um just jess's and her her ama's relationship as they uh start to kind of like get to know each other and dealing with like the constant of butting heads but clearly they uh, are connected to each other and more than just family I, I feel like 
um, they're similar to one another in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I'm really in, like enjoying like the commentary on like what it's like for somebody who uh, not only is kind of, I would say an immigrant herself in the sense like she immigrated from Malaysia with her family when she was a toddler, um, but she lived the majority of her life in the US. So she's very, um, you know, how she views the world is viewed through an American lens. So when going back to Malaysia, um, her having to kind of like see the Malaysian culture through the lens of somebody who is more American than Malaysian. And just like uh, the generational difference between her parents and her seeing them in a different lens from how she's seen her her whole life in America and how that changes when they move back. I just absolutely am enjoying seeing like that kind of play out in the story um, and the culture and the spirituality and religion of Malaysia plays a huge role in this um, in a lot of ways. So I am just really enjoying this. It got ghosts and spirits and gods. Um, and I'm just absolutely just enthralled. Um, but yeah, I will keep you up to date as I continue on. I want to at least get be most of the way done tomorrow. Um, and hopefully that will be a possibility. So again, I will update you then. Today is Wednesday and I want to update quickly about what I've read. Um, I didn't actually read anything about Blackwater Sister because I just ended up reading The Lord of the Rings, um, the last part of The Return of the King. I am so very close to being done with this book so I just ended up focusing on that and I was in a really good part um, with the story so I just got kind of sucked into it. So. Right now, we are very close to where Frodo and Sam are going to be at the Fires of Mordor, and we are quite close. Typically, I tend to um, not read, like, once we get to the point of when they leave Gondor and um, Aragorn, I tend to just stop, because I don't really like the rest of the story. It's just kind of, like, tying up loose ends that I don't really care about. Um, that I might try to read it this time since I am actively reading it through my um, audiobook instead of physically. So we shall see what I decide on that point. But yeah, I just got sidetracked from Blackwater Sister, but I'm definitely determined. I'm, I think tomorrow I'm just going to be reading Lord of, uh, Lord of the Rings to finish. And then Friday and Saturday I should be able to finish um, Blackwater Sister. But I will update you again when I've actually read um, some of Blackwater's sister and have thoughts to say on that because this is just reread stuff so I don't really feel like I have anything new or interesting to say about um, that. You say hi to my baby! Oh, hold on. Hi Noodle. Okay, like I said, I'll update you when I've read Blackwater Sister. So I know I said that I would wait to update until I've read um, Blackwater's Son, but today is Thursday and I actually finished The Return of the King, so I'm officially done with Lord of the Rings. I finished it. Um, I think I did talk about how I wanted to actually read the rest of the book and not where I normally would stop off. Um, and I did go a little bit further than normal, but I got tired of it. I got annoyed and I decided not to. <laughs> I don't really care because I call it sort of that part like the epilogue in a lot of ways because it's just like, like Saruman, like I feel like they could have dealt, like Gandalf could have dealt with him when he was in the tower and 
it would have been more efficient and everything. And so I just don't understand why he didn't um, just have that happen that way. But whatever. Um, there's just a lot of extra stuff that I feel like if that hadn't been there and then we just like saw like a little bit of like him, his life back at home and then him meet me on the boat. That would have been enough and I would have liked that. But it just gets a little extra tedious because it's like we had all this great amazing stuff and then it just goes back to the humdrum stuff um that we see here and there throughout the book book so i just wasn't here for that um and i don't really care because i've read these parts before this is like my hundredth reread it seems like so i don't really care so i finished it and i also finished my goal my reading goal for the year of 52 bit books um I'm sure I'll read more than that because I'm obviously, we obviously still have like two and a half months um, left. So maybe I'll get to at least 60 books. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how many, I've been reading about like 10 books a month. And if I read that each in November and December and plus uh, five more books this month, I could get to like maybe 80 books maybe but we're not gonna care about that I just am happy that I actually finished my reading goal for once um I don't think I've done that for like two or three years now so in the news but I said I will the index update will definitely be me talking about Blackwater Sun <laughs> So I just got back from work and it's raining, which is really nice because California is in a major drought and it's just really nice to see some rain. Um, but yeah, so today I think it's hard to tell. I think I was six hours. I had six hours left when I started reading and I have two and some minutes left in it. So I think I read about what? Four? to three and or, or the three hours and some minutes um of it so that's really nice um actually no because i was working for like five hours so it should have been five hours okay yeah sorry uh, actually i think it's more like five hours that i read um but that means that i had eight hours left Anyways, I can't remember where I left off, but I'm absolutely enjoying this. We're getting some reveals. Um, Blackwater sister is scary, but she doesn't actually seem to want to hurt her like I thought she was going to. Uh, I'm not really sure what her motivation is, really, especially after what Jess did. I'm, I'm not going to say what she did. I mean, I guess I could make this a spoiler. Um, yes, I think I already talked about this being a spoiler. I don't know if I did. But either way, I'm going to say it. She destroyed Blackwater Sisters' um, shrine and statue. So, because that was, like, the whole thing. Like, they were trying to, like, uh, save this temple because she refused to move. Um, but now that she's destroyed it, there's just no point in staying. But also, she literally, like, destroyed her place of rest, I guess? Um, so I thought she was going to actually, like, suffer the consequences of that. But, I don't know. Other than her, like, saying that she needs to do a sacrifice in order for her to, like, not do anything worse. Or to cause harm to her family. Like, nothing really has, like super bad has happened um in regards to her but then there's this whole thing so like she decides that she's gonna confront yun yun jin um the guy who's this gang boss who um 
her alma wants what had been wanting her to like seek revenge against um by killing his son apparently but um <sighs> Apparently, this guy was her lover, and this is like some kind of like ancient love spout, spite, whatever. Like, she's angry with him because clearly he didn't really want a relationship with her, and she was pregnant. And like, she had a very angry, but I don't know if it's to the point of like actually needing to kill his son. Uh, and also, did she not realize that the consequences of that could be that he would go after her son, which is his son, but he doesn't know that? This is the whole thing. <laughs> so she goes there to kind of like confront him about that. Um, Jess does. Um, so that's where I'm at with this. Also, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but Jess is in a relationship. It's long distance at this point. Um, I think it was always long distance. But uh, she, they break up because uh, she, her girlfriend feels like she's not really putting in effort and she's getting frustrated because she like no one has the right to pressure anybody to come out if they're not actually ready but she feels like she actually is but she's too scared to actually take the steps to coming out to her family and she thinks that she's hiding behind her parents as a reason to not come out and I kind of agree with her I think that she loves her parents and she's worried them about them so much that she's willing to lose herself in the process um so i've got really frustrated with her in that moment because instead of like uh realize like recognizing that she pl is playing a part not in not even in the fact that she won't come out but but the fact that she isn't even actually doing anything to actually try to maintain this relationship it's constantly her girlfriend that's been like c calling and everything and she's keeps hiding secrets which I can uh, kind of un I can I understand why she's keeping the secrets but I can't understand why she wouldn't think that she would get frustrated when it feels like the relationship is one-sided um you're not even willing you're not even do making an effort to even call her yourself you're letting her do all the calling and everything um so it and it's harder especially when it's long distance to maintain relationship uh so it's just got frustrated because she got really defensive and instead of taking responsibility in any shape or form she just let this argument kind of like spiral control and that's why they ended up breaking up so like i feel for her because like i get the family pressure aspect of it um and worrying how they're gonna take it if she comes out but again the question is how far are you willing to let your family um make that decision for you are you willing to lose yourself in the process? Because that's what I fear. Fear is what's gonna um, cause her to what, what's gonna be happen is that she's gonna lose herself. She's gonna not live her full authentic life. And no one, whether they're family or not, has the right to do that to you. So, anyways, those are just my thoughts. Um, like, I don't know. Can someone explain? Like, because I understand like how being disowned. It's a fear, especially if you have nowhere to go. Um, like, but she has somewhere to go, uh, she, and everything. And if she actually like made the effort to like to do the like, she has opportunities. I feel like um, that others don't. So it's like it's hard for me to like understand because even if her family did disown her, which I know is heartbreaking and hard to deal with, and I get not wanting to go through that, but um. She is not like she is going to be financially, uh, at least not, I don't think it would be very long. Um, but she has a place that she could go to. She has resources. Um, and I don't think that she would be physically in danger either. So other than those two, can somebody explain like why, what other valid reason for not coming out would be? Because I get her reasons. I just don't fully agree that they're worth sacrificing yourself for. Because if your parents love you enough, their love is going to transcend their homophobic phobia. And they're going to actually want to unlearn those homophobic phobia. They may be angry and they may have to deal with their personal issues. But if they love you, they're going to want to work that work that through. Um, 
So it's just, I get, get it, it's hard. But this has been a long time coming, it feels like. And I'm just wondering, is she really hiding from herself or hiding from her family? So, anyways, that's all I have to say. I shall be finishing this up tomorrow. I'm ready to just relax for the day. Five hours of reading this, and it got pretty intense at times. <laughs> so, I am <clears throat> here for the end of this vlog. Today is Saturday, and I have finally finished um, Blackwater Sister. I absolutely enjoyed this book. Um, I just squeezed the last of it. I think that um, the conclusion was really great, and the Blackwater Sister isn't as evil as you would think, and um, I was right to think that she wanted to help more than not. Um, And I really like how it ended. Like, you know, some people like to know it exactly, but it, it left with like a hopeful tone and you knew the path where it was leading at least. Um, and I just love Jessamine as a protagonist. I thought that she was somebody who didn't really know that she was brave or strong and that, you know, she didn't think that she could do the things that she needed to do, but she did it other anyways. Um, so, yeah, it was just a really wonderful book. I gave it four stars, um, and I would love to hear if you read any of the books that I talked about this week, what did you think of them, and I will see you in the next vlog. Thank you all so much for watching.